Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I hope your day is going really well. Um, I am in Luminar Flex today, and I'm talking about a specific filter, and that filter is Details Enhancer. So this is going to be one of my deep dive videos where I just dive into one filter and talk about it. So let's go ahead and hop into Luminar Flex right here. So this is a, uh, a good example of um, showing what the filter can do for you and the different settings in it. So um, details enhancer is just if you go to add filter it's right here under issue fixers and you can just click on it to add it uh, there's three categories small medium and large details and so the best thing to do to illustrate how they're different is just to show you on an image so I'm gonna use this image so small details those are the really micro fine sort of things and so of course if you go to the left things get blurry right because you're softening up the details but Generally speaking, you're gonna be going to the right. So I'm gonna take this detail slider, and just for fun, I'm going to 100, just to illustrate the point. But I'm at small details at 100, and that thing is detailed, and that's because obviously there's a lot of small detail in this photo. So let me show you the before. Regular old photo, just not crispy. And small details at 100 is pretty crispy. Now, that is not a look I would do. In fact, I almost never use the small details for that reason because those really fine details start to get like, well, crispy is the only word I can really think of. Um, they have their place. I just don't use them a lot. Not to say you shouldn't use them. It's just my, um, my workflow. I don't usually do that. In fact, I don't actually use details a whole lot, to be honest, but um, it is a great filter. Um, so medium, same thing. Left would soften the medium details and to the right will crisp them up a little bit. Now you can see, I hope you can remember, um, the medium details at 100 actually looks pretty good on this photo. That's not bad. And that's just because you're talking about the bigger bits of detail, not the really micro fine stuff. Because when you get that micro fine stuff and drag it all the way to the right, it gets really crunchy. This to me looks pretty good, to be honest. Like you actually, that's usable, I guess, is the best way of putting it. Um, and then large details, of course, is the large stuff. So for me, you're picking that up a little bit in some of the ceiling and the bricks, whereas in the medium, um, it's just a little bit more detailed in the brick areas and through the ceiling and you know maybe a little bit in, the, uh, in these columns here. But the small details, that's pretty crispy everywhere, especially the ceiling. I mean, it, that is a what I would call a sick amount of detail. Um, and sick like dude that's sick right um like that's crazy it's cool it's kind of overdone but that's to me one of the things to do with this filter it, and i'm just going to do this the che cheating simple way is mask it in so i might want to just put this on the ceiling so i'm going to take a gradient mask and just stick it on the ceiling right now i've got a blur here because there's a bicyclist going by uh but then you might want to come in with the whoops i'm on that same filter uh i mean on that same uh, uh, well, I can only mask the filter once, right? So I can go get Details Enhancer again and take Medium to 100 and then go get a Gradient Mask. And the Medium, I would take it from here and just kind of go up, right? So that way I'm able to get the top really detailed and the bottom only kind of mildly detailed. Uh, and it doesn't look bad. I mean, if you look at the before and after, right? I mean, it's really sharp in the in the top and the bottom is is adequately sharp and doesn't look overdone, right? So that's an idea, um, and the point really, I think, and I'm going to get rid of that second filter, and I'm going to reset this first one. Uh, the point really is play with them, experiment, and see what it looks like. But pretty much every time, the small details, if you really drag that slider, it's going to get really kind of crazy looking. Um, protection, this is not a good photo for that, but that basically protects the highlights. And so if you've jacked up the details really high, and I'll show you that on a photo in a minute, you can slide the protection slider to the right to reduce the impact in the highlights. So it's, you know, generally like highlights would be like in the sky, for example. You don't want a crispy bunch of stuff up there. So um, that's a good way to protect that. Um, and then masking, um, I'm just going to take all three of these to the right uh, at 100 just to get a super crazy detailed photo so that I can explain masking. Masking is basically, um, it figures out different zones uh, where it's gonna amplify details. Now, I don't know how it divides the zones, um, so I don't know, but um, it divides it into zones of amplification, let's call it, and within each of those zones, it's gonna decide how much detail uh, based on the masking filter. So um, if you have zero masking um, at 100, 100, 100, that basically means I wanna mask or obscure zero 
In other words, I want all of that 100, 100, 100 across every one of these zones of amplification. As you probably have figured out, as you start to drag the masking slider to the right, you start to say, hey, why don't you just um, mask out some of those zones? In other words, don't amplify the detail in every zone that I've figured out across the photo. Just amplify it some. And so, in other words, if you go all the way to the right, remember, I've got the detail sliders at 100, 100, 100, but because I have masking at 100, there's no detail showing because I basically said mask the whole photo. So let me show you. I'm going to turn off this filter. There it is with nothing applied, no detail. I mean, the filter is not turned on, right? And here it is with details at 100 on all three, small, medium, large, but because masking's at 100, none of it's showing, right? So that's basically what that does. So, um, you know, I don't recommend going to 100 on all three sliders and then just playing with masking. I recommend, um, I personally use medium and large and then paint them in or mask them in where I like them. But I wanted to explain those sliders. Let me show you also, um, here's an example where I might would bring up the small details a little bit uh, and maybe some of the medium details. And this is just an old macro shot with an old camera uh, from years ago. And I'm just going to paint this in. Um, I don't even have the camera or the macro filters. Anyway, um, just something like that where I've just basically painted in some of the, the detail that I enhanced um, in the uh, these wine corks, right? So there it is. Uh, let me show you the before and after. So there's before, not quite as crisp. And especially that one in the center and the bottom after much crisper so that's what i recommend doing is just painting in the details and let me show you one more photo this is uh, a landscape and right so as a landscape photographer uh, you may want to uh, you know accentuate or enhance details in certain parts of the photo but let me show you what small does right really too crazy like the water is unreal the uh, this mountain is unreal the sky is just like a, a bad hdr this grass is way too crispy so I don't really recommend small details. I think medium might look good here. I'm kind of winging this. Um, yeah, look at that. I'm at 100 on medium, and I think that looks pretty good, right? So before and after, um, it actually looks really good. It's small enough. Uh, the medium details are not so small to be like the fine ones in the small category, uh, but they're not. You know, they're they're big enough to be noticed, but not to be overwhelming. I guess is the best way of putting it. Uh, and then large. Let's just try large on top of. Uh, medium. Not so bad, really. I mean, um, I think I would just go with medium and I'd probably do something like that. And if you wanted to pop some of the small details, like in that mountain or in this grass, I don't think I would do this grass. I might would do a little bit over here. Then I would just get the filter again and paint it in as it did before. But let me show you. Um, small details. Look at the sky. Really crunchy, right? So there's before and after. Now I'm going to do protection to give an example of how that works. So as I start to drag the protection, look at these highlights over here and see how it looks. Um, now, look at that sky. It looks a lot better, right? So zero protection, sky is really crispy and kind of crunchy. And as I start to drag the protection, the sliders look good. But these other areas, like this mountain and this grass, still retain that really crisp detail from that small slider being up at 100. So that's what protection does. It's looking after my highlights and saying, yeah, you probably don't want to do that, Jim. So it's it's kind of a governor, if you will. So if you go a little crazy on the small details, don't hesitate to use a protection slider to keep them reined in. Um, and of course, the masking slider to sort of rain, uh, pull back a little bit on the reins as well. Uh, and that's really how it works. So small, medium, and large protection and masking. The best thing to do on any photo, my opinion, is two things. Experiment. Experiment a lot. See what you like. Um, and the second thing is to mask it in with the brushes or like I use the gradient mask. You could use a radial. Um, and I've got videos about masking you can find here on my channel. But just wanted to go into detail about the details uh, enhancer filter. And that's my deep dive for today, my friends. I appreciate you watching. I hope your day is awesome. And I'm going to get back and I'm going to edit some more photos and have a good day. good day. So thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care and adios.